So, when I was asked by Pastor Steve to preach today, I thought for a while, a couple days, I went home, or I went back to school where I now work, and I thought, what really applies to my life, but also what applies to a lot of other people's lives? And one thing that has been weighing on me a lot is stress and anxiety, and I know everyone deals with it. There's no one who's immune to stress, there's no one who's immune to anxiety. Now the irony about preaching about this is the past week I've been stressing about it, I've been anxious about it, and I've thought, I'm about to teach something that I am going through right now, which in a way is great because I'm applying what it is I've learned throughout the week and how to not be stressed and how, even in your stressful situations, in your worry, to give it up to God, to give up your emotions to the Lord, and He will help you to deal with it just as I spoke to the kids about it. Now, something that's really neat that I learned last year is the word stress is not in the Bible. You will not find it in the Bible. It is a man-made word, and it is a man-made feeling. God did not intend us, intend for us to be stressed. God wanted us to live through Him, praying to Him, living in His Word, and living by His Spirit. And when you bring stress into the equation, it makes it a lot harder for us to deal with. Now, um, back when I was in school, I was a student last year, and I just graduated from Gettysburg College, and they asked me to stick around this year. But back when I was a student, I was part of the leadership team at, uh, for the Disciple Makers Christian Fellowship in my church. And we would meet twice a week, or every other week on Sunday, and near finals week, the leader of the group sat us down and said, I want you to draw a curve. I want this curve to start, it's going to be a line that you curve out, and it's going to mark your stress throughout the semester. And this is near finals week, and he wants us to do that. So he says, start with the first day of classes, and put where your stress level is there. And everyone's was pretty low, everyone was, you know, down near the bottom. And he's like, as the semester increases, it kind of rose, and then it fell back down after midterms week. And then at finals week, it skyrocketed for everyone. Everyone had this huge spike in their stress levels. And what is it about finals week that makes us stressed? And as I look back, finals week was actually one of the most relaxing times because you don't have class all day. You have four exams, and then you have hours off. So it really shouldn't be a stressful time, but we build it up in our minds. We build it up that, oh, I'm going to be so stressed out at this huge exam, when really, we have all this free time, which, I mean, I guess you should devote to some studying, but you have a lot of this free time that you can really do with what you want that you don't have during the normal school year. So, looking, he kind of made us aware of that, and it was just really interesting to think in that way. Now, stress, and more accurately, anxiety, be very difficult to cope with. We work ourselves up and we begin to worry about negative outcomes if anything does not go the way we want it to. We oftentimes want our lives to go how we want them to instead of giving them to God. As my mom always used to tell me, let go and let God. It happens a lot and it's really important to sometimes give our emotions up to God. Not necessarily everything we do, but so much how we approach the situations. If you look at verse 4 in Philippians 4, Robert read, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Now, when you're in a stressful situation, it can be kind of hard to rejoice. It can kind of be hard to sit down and think, I'm so happy right now. I'm taking an exam that um, I'm probably going to get a D on because I'm not ready for it, and I'm just happy. And that's not what uh, Paul is telling us to come forward at. In any stressful situation, he knows that you're, you're going to be bogged down, you're going to be working hard, but he wants you to find joy in that situation. Finding joy in, where, in, in that moment, it can be hard to be happy, but being content and finding joy. I have a bit of an illustration. Back, I don't, I don't remember how old I was, but our family used to take our boat to West Neck Harbor every summer. And one summer, all the, all the kids were together. Um, we were all out on the beach on, on, on the harbor. 
and we had a little dinghy that we would row back to the boat. And my older brother says, I'll row it back, I'll row it back. And my mom and I were thinking, oh, we'll swim alongside you, Owen. If you see any jellyfish, just yell out. And we're, we're like, we're, we're pretty confident that Owen can spot the jellyfish. But little did we know that we were going to be swimming into a giant school of jellyfish. And as we start swimming, you know, you get the zap on the leg, get another zap. And that whole whole way back to the boat. It wasn't even that far, it was maybe the length of a football field. I just remember getting stung non-stop by jellyfish. And I was so frustrated with my brother for not spotting the jellyfish. <coughs> and there were tons of jellyfish. There's no possible way that he could have seen them all. And thinking back, it was a pain in the butt. You, don't, you know, you don't want to get stung by jellyfish. But I was at West Neck Harbor. It was a beautiful day out. And Sure, I was in a bit of a, 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 a tough situation getting stung by jellyfish, but that was, if that was my biggest problem, and I was in a bad place there, but I was at West Neck Harbor, beautiful day, with my family, on a boat. There were so many good things that I was blessed with, but I chose to focus on the negative. And that's where a lot of our struggles come from, is that when we're in those stressful situations, those worrisome situations, that's directly where our mind shoots to. We don't think of the joy that we can find in those situations. And that's what Paul's trying to illustrate here in Philippians 4, is that you're going to be in tough situations, but in those situations, find the joy that God has blessed you with, and it's able to help you cope with the situations you're in. And it's really a true, a true scenario that if you try to look at the glass as half full, and if you try to look at it with an optimistic perspective, that... Sure, I'm in this tough place now, but God has blessed me with this, this, and this. It really makes getting through those tough times easier. And that's really where Paul is going with that. And in verse 5 and 6, Paul says, The Lord is near. You can rejoice in knowing God. Do not be anxious or worried about where you find yourself. Now, the gospel lesson for today is when Jesus is discussing not to worry, and how God will provide for us. And I know that can be a really tough situation to sit down and to think, oh, well, I, uh, I just uh, lost my car, got stolen, um, you know, I didn't get that promotion at work, I didn't get all these different things, to think, oh, God will provide for me. And that's not really the way it works, that... God's just going to give you these things. But to sit and to worry about it and to stress about whatever it is you're facing, to worry and to think, oh, how am I going to deal with this? How am I going to get through this? You're not, Jesus said, you're not going to add an hour to your day where you can take more time to do this by sitting and worrying. In fact, <laughs> in thinking about it, I've kind of come to the conclusion that if we didn't stress about these things, if we spent less time worrying about these things, we probably could add an hour to our day. Because we probably spend at least an hour worrying about all these different scenarios that we can get ourselves into, when instead we can, think, we can pray to God that you can't necessarily give up the situation you're in to the Lord, but you can give up the emotions that you're feeling and pray to God and say, Father, how can I deal with these situations? What can I do? to, or, or help me cope with the fact that I'm worried right now, the fact that I'm stressed right now. Only God can take that away from you. You can't do that on your own. And when you try to do it on your own, you sit in stress, you sit in worry, <coughs> you sit and just think to yourself that I'm not going to be able to handle this, I'm not going to be able to cope with this. And that's what Jesus is teaching there, that he, he illustrates the birds and the lilies and that God provides for them. Do they worry? Does a bird fly around to its nest thinking, oh, God's not going to provide a worm today? No. They, and, and what Jesus is saying is God will provide for them, and they can't even think. So what more will God provide for you knowing that he loves you and that he cares for you and that he will, he, he sent his son to die for us. And that's really one of the, the, the easiest or the best ways to cope with our worry and our stress to Pray to God to understand that God's not going to let us fall through the cracks. Um, and in verse 7, we 
we see that only through the, the approach of prayer and petition to God to take our worries will we reach peace. We won't find that inner peace. We'll, we'll remain stressed out. We'll remain tired. Um, you're not going to want to deal with these situations if you don't give it up to God and pray for that <coughs> peace and that, that, that He helps you to cope with your worry. And uh, our mentality in these situations is, I want what I want when I want it. Essentially, we don't want the... Uh, we, we, don't, we don't want what is, quote, best for us. We want what we think is best for us. And a lot of times, uh, events in our lives, uh, certain outcomes and situations, a lot of times those don't turn out the way we want them to. And we think, oh, this is terrible for me. This is not the way things should be. That's our mentality of things. We want things to go the way that we plan for them to go. But God has a plan for us, and God wants things to go, and God will make things go the way He wants them to go for us, the way that is ultimately best for us. And ultimately, He's not going to sit back and say, oh, I'm just going to let these bad things happen to them. If you're praying to God, if you're giving it up to God, He's, gonna, he's going to make things happen in a way that will ultimately best benefit you. And even if at that immediate time, it doesn't seem like it's right for you. And I'm thinking of uh, going, I'm going to seminary next year, and starting in the fall, and I was pretty, um, pretty nervous about the whole thing. I, it wasn't just seminary, there were times where I was juggling all these different ideas in my head, and back in last spring, I was offered a position at Gettysburg College in the resident flight department, which I took. Because who doesn't want to extend their college stay for an extra year? Um, and and in, this, in this position, I work with people. I meet with all the kids who get in trouble for doing the things they're not supposed to. Um, and, and I built tons of relationships with staff and RAs and everyone at the school. And it's, it's really great to have those relationships. And I was, I was really juggling, do I want to stick with the residence life? Do I want to go into the ministry? Where's this call pulling me towards? And... Uh, throughout the semester, there were a couple of different scenarios that I was just stressing out about that job, and I wasn't enjoying it, and just as I got close to the end of the semester, I was, all right, semester's almost over, things are winding down. I get a phone call from a parent about a girl, or his daughter, and her room had been trashed by a roommate, and there were all these different... He, he was angry, the, the mom called me later, she was angry, this all happened in 24 hours. There was anger, there was frustration, and I just had to sit on the phone and, and think, I understand sir, we'll try to work through this, being polite, when really I was pulling my hair out on the other side of the phone because I just wanted to go home for Christmas, and this was literally four days from going home for Christmas. And I was stressing out, and I was worried, and I thought, why am I in this situation right now? And that was kind of the, the, the kicker, that... I'm going to seminary next year because I'm going to face challenges in seminary. You face challenges in every form of ministry. But I did not want to be in a situation where I was going to be dealing with two roommates who ultimately do not like each other. And when you ask them what happened, they say, oh, I don't know. She just kind of stopped talking to me. That doesn't happen. So I was stressed. I was worried. And at that point, I just prayed about it for a while, and eventually God just showed me that, you know, well, I'm calling you to something bigger than sitting in an office and talk, talking to um, students about what they shouldn't be doing. Instead, I'm calling you to tell them what they should be doing and how to really give it up to God. And I can't do that in the role I'm in, and that's really been a struggle for me. So it's those kind of situations where I thought this job was great for me, and it turns out God's calling me to something bigger, and He has a plan for me, and through these struggles, he showed me what that plan actually is. Um, so, verse 13. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. With that mentality, we know that by giving it up to God and giving our emotions, giving our stresses up to God, we know that through him, he can bring us strength. And fear, stress, anxiety, worry, none of those are part of God's plan for us. But nonetheless, they encompass a large percentage of our daily living, our thought processes. But we aren't alone. 
I want to provide the illusion of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, right near the end of his ministry, before he was put to the cross. He drops to his knees in the garden, <coughs> praying to God, saying, God, if there's any way, please do not sacrifice me on this cross. He's scared. He's worried. He knows. He's, he's nervous about the whole thing. He, I mean, he doesn't want to go through with being nailed to a cross and going through all of that. But then he follows up and says, but if it be your will, or whatever be your will, make it happen. Because he understands that God has a plan for all of us, and that God's plan for Christ was to bring him to the cross and to, to have him killed so that we all can live spiritually and be reborn in that spirit. And to, to think that even Christ went through emotion of went through the emotions of nerves and worry and fear, it is natural in all of us. It, again, it's a man-made emotion, but it is in us. And we're going to cope with that. But if we follow Jesus' example in the garden, that he gave it up to the Lord, he said, whatever be your will, make it happen. To remember that God's will is ultimately what is going to happen to us, and that he has a plan for us, we can rest. You can all rest, going to bed at night, knowing that you cannot escape God's plan for you, that he has a great plan for each of us, and that you can rest in that. If you had a worrisome day, a nerve-wracking day, a stressful day, pray to God, and you can understand that no matter what you've done that day, however your day went through, whether it be stressful, tough, worrisome, God ultimately has a plan for you.